Hi boys and girls, Miss Foster here. As I was looking through our book collection, I came across this story. Um, I've read it to some of the children in my class, but I thought I would read it to you because there's a mention of VE Day in there. So let's have a look. So this book is called Ruby in the Ruins and it's by Shirley Hughes, who also wrote the story Dogger that I read to you a few weeks ago. War is over and Ruby's dad is coming home. Ruby in the Ruins by Shirley Hughes. 1945, World War II was over. The fighting had ended and peace had come at last. Bombs no longer fell on London, but many houses on the streets near where Ruby and her men lived were in ruins with blackened, burnt out roofs. Men were already at work there, cleaning up the rubble. Ruby's dad was a soldier, still serving far away abroad. Many of their neighbours had been evacuated to live safely in the country during the Blitz, but Mum had refused to budge. We must be here for Dad in case he gets leave, she said. I'm not having him come home unexpectedly to find an empty house. Ruby had been sent away to a safe area with the other children from her school, but in the end she was so homesick that she had to come home to Mum. Every night when the warning sirens wailed and searchlights swept the sky, they had waited the menacing drone of approaching enemy bombers. Then came the terrifying explosions, some quite nearby, making their little terrace house shake. Mum hated going down to the cold, crowded, smelly air raid shelter. So night after night, she and Ruby clung together in a big double bed, blocking their ears and praying for the all clear to sound at dawn. At last, the joyful day of victory arrived. Union Jack flags flew everywhere. All the neighbours who were still in residence pooled their rations to have a glorious street party. The children sat at long tables and tucked into the delic delicious sandwiches, cake and even chocolate biscuits. Len Parker's dad was the first to come home. The whole street turned out to greet him. Then Jimmy Nolan's dad, who was a sailor, turned up on extended leave. But Ruby and Mum had to wait a long time until, at last, the great day arrived when they set out to the station to meet Dad. It was very crowded. Ruby hardly recognised the big sunburned man who got off the train with all the other soldiers, shouldering his heavy kit bag and waving to them. Mum ran forward and flung herself into his arms. Ruby hung back, feeling very shy. She did not know what to say when he stopped, stooped down to kiss her. From then on, everything at home changed. Ruby had to move into the little bedroom in the attic. Mum promised that they would redecorate it as soon as they could, but at the moment it was very draughty and shabby. A lot of plaster had fallen off the ceiling during the blitz, and once or twice Ruby thought she heard a mouse scuttle across the floor. Dad had been promised his old job back, although he had not started work. Ruby had forgotten how very big he was and what a lot of space he took up, sitting about in their little kitchen. Sometimes Ruby and her friends would talk about their dads. My dad goes out a lot, Len Parker told her. He wants to meet up with his old army buddies and talk about the war and stuff. So does mine, said Jimmy. Len and I like to go exploring sometimes. You can come with us if you like. I'm not sure my mum will let me, said Ruby. In the end, she pleaded so hard that mum gave in. Well, all right, love, she said, just as long as you don't go far away. Stay around the neighbourhood and take care. What mum didn't know was that Jimmy and Len loved playing on bomb sites. They was, these were supposed to be fenced off, but it was easy to find a way through the wire.
Danger, keep out, by order of the Ministry of Defence. These forbidden places were full of rubble and fallen beams, and flights of stairs lead into nowhere. The children loved this wonderful playground. Len and Jimmy climbed all over the wreckage like mountain goats, not caring how very dangerous it was. Ruby soon became as adventurous as they were. She slid over piles of rubble, seesawed on fallen rafters and stood on tiptoe on half-destroyed walls to view the ruins all around. But one day, when they were playing, the, a very bad thing happened. Ruby made an extra big jump across the fallen rafter, missed her foot in and fell. Jimmy and Len stopped playing at once and ran to help her. Ruby's knee was badly grazed and she did not want to get up. She started to cry. You better run back to her house and fetch her, Mum said Len. Quick as you can, Jimmy. I'll stay here with her. Ruby lay there for what seemed like hours. Len tried to cheer her up, but she just closed her eyes. Then she felt a pair of strong arms around her. Not Mum's arms, not Jimmy's or Len's arms. It was her dad. Don't worry, love. We'll have you out of here in no time, he said. When they got home, Dad bathed her leg and put a bandage on it. Ruby managed not to cry. Afterwards, she sat beside him on the sofa, eating a biscuit. He wasn't a bit cross about her playing in the rubble. You're an adventurous one, he said. And so are those two lads, Jimmy and Len, a couple of troopers. I should give those bomb sites a miss and play in the park from now on, if I were you. Oh, Dad, I'm so glad you're back, was all Ruby could say. And for the first time since he had come home, she put her arms around his neck and kissed him.